started. Okay, guys, we're going to go ahead and get started now. Can you guys hear me okay? We're going to talk about different kinds of ink pads today, um, tonight. Basically going to work on, talk just about the black colors. Because there's very common questions about um, which ink pad do I want for what. And there's a reason why there's so many different kinds. And this is actually just a, a small amount. So um, I'm going to be using this particular stamp pad or stamp set. But you could, this the advice I'm going to give you will work for any kind of stamps. Whether they're um, clean mounted or the wood mounted or these clear stamps. This happens to be a new set from Hero Arts, but this, these, these, um, what I'm going to talk about today can be used with any. I chose this one because we have detailed stamps and we have like a bold image and we have um, sentiment stamps. So this will really cover all different kinds of scenarios. And then all of the stamping I'm going to do today will just be on a smooth white cardstock. I tried to make sure that I wasn't using any kind of a textured cardstock because um, I didn't want texture to affect the outcome of the stamping. Okay, so we're going to talk about all these different ink pads and what they're good for. I'm going to start with stays on. So Stazon comes in a number of different colors, and Stazon is a solvent-based ink. Um, so it does have a little bit of a smell to it. Um, they kind of, um, I believe that they kind of make it smell a little bit better. To me, it smells like a cherry almond smell, but it is a solvent base, and so if you are sensitive to that, you may want to use it in a ventilated space. The intention behind Stazon is for it to be an ink that you can use on really slick or glass surfaces like, um, like glass, plastic, shrinky dink, um, metal, that kind of thing. It, you can also use it on clay, um, like a polymer clay. Uh, it's great on coated papers and on plastic, on laminate. Um, you can use it on terracotta, on cellophane, on rubber, on tin, on aluminum, on acetate. For myself, I probably most often use it on acetate um, because it's really great for, as I'm a card maker, um, I make a lot of shaker cards and sometimes you want to stamp something on that clear plastic acetate and this is the kind of ink that's going to stay where you stamp it. Other kinds of ink are not going to stick to those surfaces. They would um, just smear right off or be not even, they might even just beat up on it immediately. Um, this will this will probably smear when you use it on vellum um, or on cloth um, or unpainted wood surfaces. So that's something to be aware of. When you open the ink pad, there is a clear plastic vapor shield that comes with it. Um, when you, you want to make sure that that's, you keep that, do not throw that little plastic vapor shield away because it helps keep the pad moist when you're not using it. Okay. Um, if this will dry in three to five, three seconds to about five minutes, depending on the surface that you're inking. It is a raised pad, so you can, no matter what size stamp you're doing, you can easily ink it. Okay, um, so it's easy to it's easy to use. It does have a little bit of a smell, but not necessarily um, a terrible one. But I wouldn't advise that you breathe deep either. <laughs> so when using a solvent-based ink, you it is best to use a solvent cleaner, and we do have one by Stazon. Um, you want to, um, but you can just clean it with a regular. Can you dip that in the water over there? With it, with however you would normally clean things, but it will probably stain. This might, it will definitely stain my, my stamp here. 
I'm gonna use a stamp chamois precise to clean mine. So I would not recommend using this on fabric and I would not use it on anything. If it is not archival. I would not use it on any kind of um, documentation, scrapbooking, that kind of thing that you want to save or have long term. And definitely don't use it on cloth because, um, well, you don't want to use it on any cloth that would that you're trying. Like if you're going to use it as a, to stencil onto a tea towel, um, it's it is because it's solid based. It will over time eat away at the fibers. It's not the worst thing in the world, but if you want it as a keepsake. That's why you would you, you would use a different um, different ink instead, which we'll, we will get to. Renee says it has a licorice smell. Yeah, kind of. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna move on. I want to show you though that um, recently Stazon has had a change, and that is there is now not a change but a new version, and this is Stazon Pigment. Um, they are two different inks, so it's not as if this one this one becomes this one. These are two different inks in that the new version is a pigment. So the difference is that pigment. Um, when using this, if you use this one, if you use the original or the OG <laughs> to stamp onto plastic, glass, metal, that kind of stuff, you will notice that it... The impression is kind of like as almost as if you use dry erase because it's a little bit transparent and honestly um, kind of disappointing <laughs> when you're when you know if you're using a black you want a dark crisp image and on a slick surface while it will stay it's not as intense as you might want so the pigment version is going to give you that. It is a special formulation, so it can and does still work on everything the original stays on does. So all those same slick surfaces, it's just that this is pigment, and you're going to get that rich, crisp color. But yes, it is still solvent. Okay. Any questions about the stays on inks? No? Okay. All right, so we'll, we'll move on to the next one then. I'm gonna, can you hand me that, um, the whole, yes. <laughs> there you go. Thank you. I'm going to write down on this paper that this we used stays on. And oh, I, thought I might as well stamp with every single ink pad too. Yeah, even on paper, I noticed that it's more intense and more a better um, better coverage. Okay, I'm actually going because you can even on camera see the difference. Yeah. Okay, so after stays on, the next one I want to share with you is going to be um, Versafine. Okay. Oh, I'm gonna clean this. Where's my... Oh, here he is. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so Versafine. This, if, if you were to ask me what's my favorite black ink pad, and the one that I recommend the most often and use the most often, it's this bad boy, Versafine. Hand down my personal preference for the best ink pad for stamping on paper. 
Um, you get crisp, clear, detailed images. It's water resistant. It dries quick. Um, it is great for um, it's great for cardstock. Um, you can use it in a, you can use watercolor pencils or watercolor markers over the top of it if you want to. This one is archival. This one is acid free. One of the things I, that I really enjoy about this particular ink pad is its lid, believe it or not, because it is attached and it has a double hinge lid. So that means that it can wrap all the way around itself and you can hold it from the back like this. So, which is handy when inking a large stamp because you can go over the surface like this. Also, you can let it sit on itself and its platform raises it up so it's a little bit higher. And that also makes it easier for inking in, the, in this direction as well. The ink pad is a medium um, cush, <laughs> which just, which to me is nice. If you have a really heavy hand and you push super hard, this might not be the ink pad for you. And, but you don't need it ink. You do not need to push really hard. You just kiss it to the ink pad like that. And it's very thin ink and a very juicy ink pad. So one of these ink pads lasts three to five times longer than any other ink pad. This one. You can, and you could, it's so juicy. You could leave the lid off of this overnight. Come back tomorrow morning and ink and stamp this again, and it will be just as juicy. Your cat could walk over it, and it will still be juicy. You're gonna have little kitty paw prints everywhere, but this would be really cute. Um, this is a really great ink pad. It's thinning kind of like a um, screen printing ink. Oh, Renee asked if the stays on pigment is permanent. Yes, it is permanent. The stays on pigment is permanent. Okay, so with the VersaFine, one of the reasons I like it so much is because it captures teeny tiny details as well as really bold images. Can you hear me those other stamps? So for example, this sort of branch from that set is a bolder image. Sometimes when inking a stamp like this, you can have it, it can look um, spotty, but this will be, give us nice clear coverage on the entire surface of this, of the stamp. And even when you're doing like sentiments or something or anything really detailed, you still get every little aspect every little curl of each letter is all you can see everything I'm stamping from the side because my camera woman is in my way so I'm off a little bit but you get the idea um, the other thing that's great about the, these is you can color over them with water-based product so like this is a Tombow marker and I'm just going to scribble over this. You can color over the top and have it not smear. So you don't get any black. And I wouldn't use a yellow um, marker, water-based product at all over something I was worried that would bleed or, or smear. And it doesn't. I'll get that last one with the piece of paper. Okay. okay. Put that in the frame. Okay. So I'm going to show you it. The, here's that same marker. I'm just going to scribble on... On this. I could actually do this technique on my glass mat, but I'm doing it over this so you could see with the white paper underneath. And then I have water in a water brush here. I'm going to make it really wet. And I'll color, I'll just paint that wet yellow color right over the top and it doesn't smear the paint at all, which is awesome. You can use watercolor markers over the top with, without it smearing which is really great. Here's a clear wink of Stella. You probably can't see this on camera, but just the clear glittery stuff. Yeah, can you see that? Okay. So this is, and you could use watercolor pencils, whatever you want and not have it smear at all. So this is why I love this particular ink pad. 
it is pigment so you could if you really wanted to emboss it you could it does you you have a little bit of time but this one dries pretty darn quick Renee says you have you've had yours forever yeah this is a fantastic ink cut and it will last forever and it's great coverage yes yes Tanya um, Nicolette the price point on this one good good question this one is $10.99 and it is a little bit more expendy than other ones, but like I said, it'll last you three to five times longer than any other one, so it's totally worth it. And as a, no matter what level of stamper or skill you have, this is the one that I recommend to most everyone. This is a great ink pad. So before we were talking about how the stays on had a new version of itself. Well, so does Versafine. There's also Versafine Claire. And Versafine Claire is a pigment ink as well. When it comes to the Versafine family, these can do everything each other can do. And the black on black to black comparison isn't a very fair one <laughs> because they're, they're, they're so identical. The difference here really is more in the pad itself because this one's lid does not stay hooked on. Um, and, but it does come in a set where they can stack on top of each other. So if you got other colors. Um, this one is a very rich, beautiful color as well. Same kind of squishy pad. Same kind of great coverage. It does all the same kind of things. It's very, very black. Th these two are basically twins. So if you were gonna look, if you're looking for a black with this, with all the great benefits of these, I would personally buy the Versafine original. However, the Versafine Claire comes in a bunch of beautiful colors, and the, this is the Claire lineup. All of the Claires have the richest, most defined pigment inks I've seen in any other ink, uh, any pigment inks. Gorgeous. If you're going to compare black to black, the one advantage that this one, the Claire, has over Versafine is that the Claire ink will remain embossable for a couple of minutes. Um, even when it feels dry to the touch, it's still embossable. And that is a very unique characteristic of any to anything. But if I were going to recommend one of these, I would still recommend this for your black. And then I would definitely buy go to the Claire for any colors because the colors are so rich and so vibrant and have the, that excellent coverage. Okay. So I'm wondering about alcohol markers with them. So you do not want to use alcohol markers with these, but I am going to show you a couple of ink pads that you can use alcohol markers with, but do not use them with these ones. So the Versafine family you're going to use for water-based products, markers, pencils, watercolors, the Tombow markers, that kind of thing. Okay, we'll move on. Okay, this is the archival ink. Thank you, cleaning that for me. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. The Archival Ink by Ranger is a fantastic ink as well. This is one is acid free, it's archival, it is permanent, and it is waterproof. If you're familiar, if you're a pen lover, you probably know about Micron pens. Every, these are not related in any way, they're not made by the same company, nothing like that. But everything great about a Micron pen is this is everything great about an archival ink. So anything that you're gonna use for documenting, so for scrapbooks, for planners, for art journals, anything like that, that you want an ink pad, this is the ink pad that you want. Also, if you're into mixed media at all, this is the ink pad that you want because you can stamp onto and over you know, your page that you've put gesso on or your page that you've put um, acrylic inks on or you've watercolored over it or anything like that and then you want to stamp on top this is the ink pad for you um also if when we when i was talking about how the versafine has kind of a squishy ink pad and you don't want to press hard the 
archival pad is a cloth pad. I don't know. Can you see that it, it's cloth? Mm, I can kind of get the green. That helps a little. Okay. So it's a cloth pad and it's very, very stiff. Um, so you can press harder on this one and not have to worry about like the ink getting overloaded. <laughs> um, but it is a very, very good ink pad. If you, I squished it a little, I just turned it a little when I was snooping. That's my fault. That is a, a user error. I didn't have, I don't have my elbow room. Sorry. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> there we go. It squished a little bit when I was trying to stamp the first time. This is a fantastic ink, like I say, for people that are doing any kind of documenting or if you're doing mixed media. Or if you just want, you're, you're just, you're looking for a good first ink pad and you're not sure what, what you want to do and you want, you want some variety. This one, you, because it's waterproof, you can use all the same water-based markers and paints and, wa and water and um, watercolor pencils that we can use on the Versa Fine. Okay, but do not use alcohol-based markers with this one either. This is for water-based products. So if you're a beginner or you're talking to your friends who are into stamping and they've been stamping for a long time, they are most likely going to suggest one of these two. And it really depends on their own personal preference or what they've been exposed to. And this is a very close second for me, but there's other people, including my camera woman here, who's, this is their number one. Is that right? Number one for certain projects, but majority of card making, I'll always go to the Versa Fine. Versa Fine. Well, you're more into mixed media anyway. So yeah. you're, this is kind of more like up your alley. Okay. So we'll move on to the next one, which is going to be um, Memento. Memento. you're asking your friends for advice on ink pads and they tell you this one, the Memento, they, they themselves either like to use alcohol markers and or the person who recommended it to them likes to use alcohol markers. This is, the, this is one of two that we sell that I would recommend for alcohol markers. The reason you have to be careful about what kind of ink pad you use with alcohol based markers is that certain pads can ruin your expensive alcohol-based markers. Let me clean my ink pad here, or my stamp. <laughs> okay. So the Memento is also a cloth pad. And it's very stiff, like the um, archival one is. <laughs> So it's pretty easy to ink with. Okay, so this one, the Memento, comes in a few different colors, um, but it is um, alcohol marker friendly. You want to avoid using the water-based products with this one though. So all those colors, all the, the Tombos, the watercolor, the watercolor pencils, and um, watercolor paint, any of that kind of thing, you'd want to avoid when you're using Memento. Memento is better when used with, alco with alcohol-based markers. So I'm gonna grab a bunch of different kinds of alcohol-based markers here, including Sharpies, which are alcohol-based. These you can color over the top of the marker without it having any damage to the mark to the um, pen itself. See what happens is some of those other kinds of, of inks can soak or wick up into your nib of your alcohol based pen and ruin your pen, which is too expensive to um, to replace Repl yeah <laughs> I mean it's doable but you don't want to have to replace you know three to eight dollar pins so I just use a bunch of different kinds here's an iron lac here's a copic here's a pro art and a sharpie and if you look at them none of them none of them bled 
Can you see that? So these, um, this is, the Memento is a great one for alcohol-based markers. Are you going to make a comment? Okay, do any of you use the Memento? And what are your thoughts on it? Okay, the the other option with uh, with alcohol pens is the Hero Arts Intense Black. This one is also a sorry, get the lid off. This one is also a cloth pad, so it's very stiff, and it is easy to use. It is a little bit of a bigger pad than the gym side by side. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. So it is a little bit larger than the Memento. You can still use all of the same, you know, alcohol based markers over the top of it. It's a very intense black color. What are you doing? <laughs> oh, okay. That Copic's a little more juicy. Oh, I got a different Copic. Thank you. There's a Sharpie. Here's the Pro, the Pro Art one. So these ones do not blend or bleed like the um, any of the other ones will, and these do not damage your markers. Okay. So either of these two, if you're doing alcohol-based uh, marker for coloring, these are the, either of the two you want, okay? Any questions about that? Okay, Renee says that she just got, Renee says I use everything. I do so many different paper crafts that you need them all. I just got my Hero Arts Intense Black. Good. Yes, Inten the Intense Black is really great. And of the, on a fine line like this, it's not that noticeable, but if you were gonna use a bold image stamp, um, this, if you were to compare these two, the Intense Black is much deeper and darker and better coverage than the Memento when you compare the two side by side. If you don't have this one to compare to, you think this one just, did just fine. So, but if you're going to buy one of the, one of the two, they both work great. I will say that the Memento is more widely known and recognized and asked for and easier to find in the, in, out there in the world than the Hero Arts is. I personally prefer the Hero Arts. I love the bigger pad and I love the, how dark and intense it is on a, um, on a bold stamp, but they both will work for whatever you're doing because they both have that raised image, that raised pad anyway. Okay. So next let's do Versa Craft. Okay. Okay, so those are the basic ink pads, and then we have a couple of more, just a couple more to go through. This one is a Versa Craft. This one is a um, an ink that has a squishy foam pad. And it is great for the general crafter because you can use it on um, surf more surfaces than just paper. So I'll stamp it on the paper here. So you can see it gives you pretty good coverage. Um, but this one you can, this is the one of the ink pads that we looked at. This is the one that you can stamp on fabric or stencil onto fabric. You can stamp onto unpainted wood or any kind of uncoated paper. Um, you can stamp onto leather onto unglazed pottery. Um, so it's a very good general crafting. If you like, to, if you're kind of stamped sometimes, but you know, on card making, but you also like to play with other surfaces and you want an ink that can kind of do both, this might be the one for you. When stamping onto fabric or stenciling onto fabric, you're gonna want to heat, heat set it, um, like with an iron. And you would just put the iron on, on the cotton or the high setting. Um, 
you can't if you it does stay wet long enough to emboss it on paper if you wanted to do that and it's definitely the one that I would recommend for stenciling on on fabric and that's probably what I use it the most often for is stenciling on fabric okay okay so moving on the next one is brilliance Brilliance is a unique ink in that it is a pigment hybrid. And um, honestly, I don't use the black Brilliance very often, but it does also come in a white and a gold and a silver. And I do use the gold and the silver probably more than anything else. And the reason why is because the Brilliance is, is an ink that though it's pigment, it can dry on coated surfaces such as um, vellum or pearlescent papers, those kind of shiny or coated papers. This one will dry within three to five minutes and other ink pads are not gonna do that. However, the great, well, other pigment ink pads are not gonna do that. You're gonna have to emboss set those. Um, this one, you do not have to emboss or heat set in order for it to dry on vellum. So. Um, the kind of person, the, the most oftentimes when I rec when I recommend a brilliance ink pad, it's usually to somebody who is stamping or making multiple like invitations and wanting to use a specialty paper like a vellum or a pearl eyes paper or something like that. And um, the the this is so this is what I would rec recommend for that because I, they, I know it's going to dry and not ruin their project um, oftentimes those same people that are wanting to make a, a an invitation or they're making you know 50 100 hundreds of the same project over and over and over again and so we you definitely want it to be able to dry and they don't want to have to also heat set or also emboss with powder every single one of them so brilliance is great for that um, but if you're gonna, if you are stamping on a, on a surface that you've never stamped on before with it, I would recommend you stamp it and then just let it sit for a while. If it's not dry within five minutes, it's just not gonna be dry. It just isn't gonna work on that surface. But this one does work on vellums and and that kind of thing. Oh, good. This one has a, yay. <laughs> See how this one has a clear vapor shield? I wanted to show you a trick with that. First of all, whenever you get an ink pad that has a vapor shield, do not throw that away. The re if it has one, it needs one. The reason it needs it is because that pad is likely to dry out if you don't keep the vapor shield. However, it's kind of annoying to pick this up and not get your fingers yicky and to, to keep track of it. I mean, look, it kind of I kind of lose it on my black uh, glass mat. So I want to show you a trick to keep it where you want it. Put it on top of the ink itself and then use a, use a thick dimensional adhesive like, a, like the thick pop dots or here I'm going to use a dimensional foam and stick it right in the middle and then I'm going to remove that little paper liner and then put the lid on and press down in the middle. Okay, now that vapor layer will be right where you, where it should be and you won't lose it. Might need two. Might need two on that one, yeah. Okay, and that holds the little vapor shield in place. This would be better with a um, pop dot than a foam dot, but you get the idea. That's how you hold that in place. So let's stamp with the Brilliance. This is a squishier foam pad, so you don't press super hard. Okay, pretty good coverage, but there's other, you know, it's okay. I would say it's like a six, seven out of 10 on coverage. Um, and that's because it's black. The gold and the silver are fantastic in that you know that they're going they're the only gold and silver that you know are going to dry and you're not, even on vellum and you're not going to have to heat set them or um, put 
embossing powder on them. So I don't, I don't often recommend the black in the, unless you need that option, but I don't recommend the black outside of stamping on vellum or coated papers. Um, but I do recommend the gold and the silver all the time, regardless of what kind of paper you're going to stamp onto. Okay. And then what's left? We have our Distress. Oh, Distress. So there's Distress Ink and Distress Oxide. These are, the Distress Ink is a water-based dye, and the Oxide is a water-based fusion of dye and pigment. I won't go into a ton of details over these because because um, Tim Holtz um, has so many fantastic videos that go cover everything that you need to know about this stuff and has so many great um, techniques that you can do with it. And I'm just kind of showing um, the basics here. And I just wanted, because they come in black, I just wanted to show you these two. Now the ox, the difference, one of the other differences besides this, the oxide having part, being partially pigmented is that it's also, depending on the color, it can be much paler than, than the Distress version. So this is black soot and black soot, the same color family, but one is more black than the other. And even in the paper, even in the pad, you can kind of tell that this one's more gray. So these are great for direct to paper techniques. So I'm just gonna actually squish some on. So there's the black soot and Distress ink. And then I'll do the same side by side with the oxide. And can you say one's much grayer than the other? These are great for direct-to-paper techniques for taking foam or stencil brushes and blending onto paper. You can stamp an ink with them, but of the two, the oxide's going to be much easier to stamp with because um, Distress Ink is more likely to bead up on the stamp. Bead up on the stamp. <laughs> Not beads up. I'm gonna to attempt to stamp with each one. Now my little lemon slice here has been stamped so many times my um, my stamp is loving ink now and stamping pretty well. So there's, there's what that one looks like. I didn't have it beat up at all, but it is kind of, mm, I'd say a five out of 10 in terms of pigment coverage. And then here is the oxide, and it's much better coverage compared to the two. And if I'm gonna, if I'm going to get one of these, I'm always gonna go to the oxide because I love the way that you can blend it and how because it's pigmented, it stamps better, and it's just easier to glide over the paper. And the reason why is because of that pigment. Pigment sits on top of the paper for a longer period of time than dye ink it does. Dye ink wants to soak into the paper and dry right away. Pigment wants to live on top. And that's what gives you time to, to get those beautiful blends of different colors. I almost never use these colors. I like to buy Distress inks for the color, not because for all the other colors, not for black. Um, but I wanted to point them out as they live out there in the world too. And Distress, yes, there's so many colors of Distress. And yes, we do have the latest color at Craft Warehouse, the um, speckled egg. Yes. Yes. <laughs> which is a blue, which is kind of a bluish gray color. Okay, so let's kind of go back over. I just want to talk about the, the ones I would recommend the most. So here's all these ink pads. Can you see them all? Get everybody out of the way. Okay, there we go. Get all those ink pads. Here's the party. <laughs> if you are... If you think that you're going to stamp and you're not going to use the expensive markers, like the alcohol-based markers is what I mean when I say that, if you think you're mo most likely going to use um, color pencils or watercolor pencils or water-based pens like the Tombows or the Zig Clean Colors, any of those kind of pens, then I would recommend VersaFine. And I have, there's a lot of people that would argue, no, this one, the archival ink. Either one of these would be the ones I, I would get one of these. But I would say this one to a beginner because you're going to, no matter what kind of image you're going to use, the tailed to bold, you're going to get great coverage. And this one's going to last three to five times longer than any other ones. Um, but it is a personal preference. This one is $10.99. This one is $7.99. 
Both of these are available on our online store as well as in our stores. Okay, but I would definitely buy one of those. If you're gonna use alcohol-based markers, you want either the Memento or the Hero Arts, okay? So I would buy one of those next. So buy one of these and then buy one of these. And then after that, I would buy this one, if you can find it. If you can't find that, get this one. But this is gonna cover you, so I would go like this. This is gonna be my first choice row. <laughs> this is gonna be my second choice row. And that, it says, so if that's the case, it would be like this. Um, this one's better than this one because it's gonna give you that full great pigment color, but it might be a little harder to find out there in the world. But at Craft Warehouse, you can find all six of these. Um, but this is the three that I would recommend. But this, this is a close, I mean, these kind of are interchangeable um, more so than these, than these others are. But if you got, if you were going to get three, either get these three or these three is essentially what I'm saying. This one, you only need, if you're going to be doing the, you only need this over those other ones. If you're going to be doing fabric or, um, stamping on fabric or wood, then I would get this one too. And you only need this one if you want to stamp on vellum or glossy paper and still have that pigment and not have to wait. So this is a rarity that you would use this one. I would say that if I'm looking for a black ink pad, I would say 80% of the time, I pretty much use this one. 80% of the time. Does that sound about right? Mm -hmm. Like, what, which one do you use the most often? Like. I use the same. I use this the one. Versafine. The Versafine, yeah. So what about you guys? Which of these ink pads do you use the most often? Brenda wants to know if the Versafine has a reinker. Yes, the Versafine has a reinker. The Archival has a reinker. The Memento and the Stays on. These four we have a reinker for. Yes. So the Versacraft for quilting labels. Versacraft for quilting labels? Yeah, that would work. You just have to heat set it with your iron. Yes, Brenda, thank you for pointing that out. On the Distress Inks, these are reactive with water. And so, and that's one of the main intentions what to use these for. And that's why I suggest you go check out any, any videos from Tim Holtz on his Distress Inks. Um, that's the one of the funnest things to do with these inks is to react, use water and you can spritz, give me the spritzer. You can spritz water over the top of them to get that reaction and they will, and the color will bleed or blend as well. And see how the distress ink and the oxide are reacting differently. And the oxide is called oxide, I don't know if you can see those spots already, um, because it, this, the water reacting gives you, gives this almost like a halo around them, making it look oxide or is oxidized, I should say. Yes, Brenda, oxide is opaque. That's a good point. The oxide is more opaque, whereas the Distress Ink is going to be more of a transparent. Brenda says she, oh, Renee said you use Archival the most and you like that it's permanent. Yep, that is definitely a benefit. I really want to thank you guys for putting up with all of the trouble I had in the beginning and for my camera person. Thank you. <laughs> I had to call her in at the last minute because I just couldn't get the camera the right way and it's still not apparently, but... Um, in the future, I'm going to practice even more and figure out the right angle. <laughs> yeah, Tim is doing videos um, every week on different, different on his different product, and there's so much to learn, and it's great to learn from the designer himself. So that's a good point, Renee. Thank you. I'm thinking about doing a video like this in the future that is all about adhesives, and. Um, going over, you know, what kind of adhesive do you need for what kind of, of project. Uh, and I would love to do it about for pens as well. Um, so go ahead and feel like when I'm, Stephanie wants to know why I'm going to do another video. I hope to do one once a week, um, but I definitely got to figure out getting the camera angle the right direction <laughs> and starting on time would be great too. <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, but feel free to leave your comments in the Go ahead and leave a comment if you have other suggestions for what kind of videos you'd like to see. I would certainly love to do actual projects. Brenda says adhesives. Yeah. Okay, thanks, Brenda. I'll, I will definitely plan to do adhesives in the future. That might even be the next one. 
Renee says she's glad that Craft Warehouse is back open. We're glad too. We're glad too, for sure. And we are working on our online site. In the meantime, we do have, we are selling via comment sold. So if you visit our website, you can find um, uh, a number of different items. We put, we have hundreds and hundreds of items on there already. If you have requests for what you wish we sold on that site, let us know and we can add more items. We add more all the time. In fact, we just added a bunch of these inks. Um, oh, she wants to know if I have a tripod. Yeah, I started out with a tripod, but I had so much trouble with it getting the, the getting it to line up straight and then it still didn't work anyway <laughs> and then I was out of time so well well out of time so I will definitely be using a tripod next time thank you if you also so I was going to say I would like to do pro actual projects in the future too not just informational so if you have ideas on different kinds of things that you'd like to learn about or different kind of projects you'd like to see feel free to comment those ideas as well. Oh, send out an alert before we do the next video. That would help get more people's attention okay. to it. Yeah, we'll do that too. Good idea. Okay, thank you so much for watching and we will um, see you next time. Thank you guys. Bye.